Uh, hello and welcome back to Alex Go Sailing. In today's episode, we're going to do some more work on this lovely boat. Now you can see down here is a bit of a mess because I've been prodding and poking. You can see where I've been chipping away at the wooden here, just waiting for it to dry out. I've noticed the dip in the roof deck and it collects water, which didn't really seem like it should be doing that. Yeah, while we're doing the core, I was looking and that table always sat a bit lower down where it connected to the base here with these bolts. Uh, so it kind of leaned down, you couldn't really fold it out easy. So I was looking, doing a bit more looking, looking. Then I started dismantling this and this box section here finishes there uh, and that comes to about there and that should be up here so what it's done I don't know if it's hollow in the bottom because I can't really see but this just sits on top of the casing for the uh, center board as you can see and what I think's happened is it's squashed down because the roof isn't meant to bow like that and it would explain why when I'm doing the mast raising it seems like the mast base itself wants to be about an inch higher. So I think it's compressed down. Now, I do know the mast has been replaced and that's because it was bent in transport when it's taken somewhere from, I think from Scotland to the south coast on the back of a lorry. Uh, I don't know whether they bent it because it also bent some of the uh, raising poles, but those are being fixed now. Um, but I don't know whether they, if that bent, they kind of like squashed the roof down um and cause this as well now it's not really a big problem to fix so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut away these like these flanges that are welded on the side go down quite away um so i'm going to cut out the side of those and then hopefully i can slide this up and get the roof pressed back up now it's fiberglass and since i'm digging out half the inside uh, it should be easy to get back to the correct level and i thought i'd do it before i start filling it with a thickened epoxy and making it not movable again. So I really want to get this sorted. Um, so the plan is cut away the fiberglass that's kind of holding this in because I think it's pretty well held in from going back up. Um, ideally get this out of the way completely if I can. Right, so I've got one of my favorite tools to use anyway for fiberglass stuff. It's this little multi-tool you can get. It's got this little blade that vibrates. It's really handy because you can just slice things very precisely and easily. Uh, different settings and it's quite easy to control. A bit noisy though. So I'm gonna try and run down stainless steel, keep it clean. See that there I've cleaned out this entire side all the way down to the bottom there so you can see where it stops it does look like someone's had this apart at some point and re-glassed it or something and they probably haven't done the best of jobs I mean I mean dry fiberglass like that it's just kind of messy in loads of different ways so I'm gonna do the same on the opposite side right so I've done some more excavation and did you look at that completely out kind of but like you can see where it stops and it's a bit more rusty a bit of a stain there uh, it kind of stops there but imagine that an inch higher uh, this side you can't really see much filler and um, when you're looking at it it looks pretty straight but, I mean when you look at this side it looks like it's bent out a bit if you can kind of see it kind of looks bent that way a little bit and it's like wedged some filler in there or something it was quite soft. Yeah, I'm gonna try and jack this up now, see if it will move. Uh, hopefully it does, because that made my life a bit easier. So I've got the jack placed on this edge, to try and transfer the weight through there and keep it more central because it is stepped over. Um, I'm just gonna slowly jack it, keep my ears open, and if this starts moving up, then wonderful. Remember, we have got an entire roof to bend up as well as just lifting this off. Uh, and to actually get this off, I kind of need to bend the roof up, otherwise there's no way it's coming off altogether. So, I'm just going to do it by hand. If I see a problem, I'll just undo it. So, 
Fingers crossed. Let's try and keep the cracking to a minimum. So I've just come back in and I've let everything off again and you can see just by leaving it a few, uh, well about an hour maybe, it's actually held itself higher than it was. You can see the, the lip there where it was sat on and obviously where it was down there. So it's slowly flexing its way back up obviously with the help of the jacks and stuff. Um, whereas before it wouldn't do that, it would just want to go straight back down. Um, but also inside, um, there's actually like a through hole in there that goes down into the centerboard thing and I think that's the like cracked area that I saw um, from below. Uh, I'll go down and show you now because I want to have another look. Um, but it doesn't make any logical sense to have a through hull there because it's not like there's any plumbing that's going to there for any kind of water stuff. Uh, bilge pump, no. There's one fat hole up here, which, well, maybe you run wires down it or something. The jack underneath here, I'm going to try and remove this, so that allow me to glass down there. Uh, so let's see how this goes. I've done done the bolts as well, because uh, it wouldn't really come out if that didn't happen. Oh, what was that? I think I'll have to use the multi-tool a bit. so weird you wiggle this and the whole centerboard casing moves it's gonna be the right pain to get out though who put the light in the way It's a hose, it's an actual hose. What the hell do you want that in here for? What? Doesn't make any sense why you need a hose running out here. Probably came out the hole at the top to here. That's just dumb. There's no deck drainage. People have showers here, maybe in some of the boats. Oh, just what? It's not a water intake for anything because why would you want water going out there? It's not a drain off the deck because it won't be pooling anymore now that the roof's at the right height. Baffling. Doesn't say anything like that in the owner's manual either. Right, you can see. Look at this, right. What's going on here? So, I'll see here, they've obviously kind of wedged it out with some stuff. I don't know how easy that'll come off. Just fiberglass. So, I think if I take this wedge thing out, that should allow me to get it back to the original shape. Uh, in terms of what's going on here, the fact that I can move that is concerning and I think that lines up to with what's going on underneath. Great workmanship whoever did this. Thank you very much. That's not even connected there. Look at that movement. I am officially baffled. Right, so gonna straighten this a little bit. Apart from that, it's pretty much good to go. I'll be able to put some sort of faceplate welded in there. I'll take it to the welder that I know. Put a base plate in there because that edge is like a knife and I think that's quite easy just to press down in and like 
all of the weight isn't going on these edges because, well, it isn't. These faces are just there for the side to side strength. Apart from that, it's literally just the edges of this very thin box section. Well, it's probably like two mil box. So, nothing really. So if we get that plated, get rid of this, make that perfectly flat to the height that we need it, uh, we should be dandy. Ah. Well, that wasn't doing any good anyway. Look at that. That was a bit of the gel coat, fiberglass. Look at that. That's the bottom of the boat. Alright, so I've come up with a better arrangement. Got massive blocks of wood running each side. Those are like the seated areas, so that's where the, like, the, the armor holes tuck in underneath. So, putting it right on the outside probably wouldn't be that strong, but right on the edge, straight where it would meet the hull coming up. Should be plenty. They're all quite long, so it spreads the load. It's not a crazy amount of force on these, but you can see we've got an absolutely massive gap, but it's just gonna stretch a bit more. It's slowly popping back up. It's almost dead flat across here now, as you can see. Just dips down just to the base, so I'm thinking a centimeter at most more. Um, See where it's up to. It's almost touching the mast, so I might have to go up and touch more, but it's not too far really. You can see it's dipped here. The main thing I'm looking for is so it'll drain water away. And you can see how it would collect in here. Um, I will be removing these tracks, so that will help a bit. Because these tracks just, yeah, they are not needed. Because all they do is offer that frame for the marsh raising system and for the marsh raising system they just go in the same spot. But my job for now is cutting away this. So you can see oh, it's all broken in there. It's a bit of like gel cut of the fiberglass. So I'm going to cut this out, get rid of this rotten wood. I'm going to mark where the top of this was. I think that's roughly where it wants to sit. So I'm going to mark it on the side there so I always know where that is as a reference point. So it's time to get cracking. just ripped off that must be like that that's why look how dry that is in there and then random bits of filler but I mean Jesus Christ you can see the original um, bit of sealant around here as well so I'm gonna get rid of that I'm gonna tidy this up get rid of all this stuff because there's no point keeping it and if I get rid of it I can do a nicer cleaner job alright I'm underneath the boat and you can see there let's try and focus it that's the damage uh, just looking at this I'm tempted to just cut all of that out and then whack a balloon in there should be easy enough to do and I'll get a better stronger finish but that's for another day. I'm going to come back out tomorrow and get started on it again. Right, it's the next day and I'm back at it. Just been doing a bit more fine detail kind of thing and more investigation. Um, been underneath the boat. There's a hole there. Um, this is the hole. So I pulled back this area here. It's mostly just dodgy glass work, but you can see we're back to the original pretty much up top here. This edge is pretty much original. Um, but you can actually see, well you can't really see from the outside too much, but obviously you've got this piece here which is, see how that's broken, the through hole thing was mounted there, but just there you can see a little slit inside the uh, natural tube, you've got a little dark slit there. Uh, on this side you can just make it out maybe, but pretty much on this side there's a, just a slight gouge, probably down to the same kind of length there and obviously at some stage the base of this because it is just that box it's just sliced on that edge when compressed so the theory i'm going off is 
this hole probably wasn't great to start off with. Um, I think the wood that went in here kind of was meant to continue because it kind of makes sense it continuing because it that's the the correct level it should be I think um, but I don't know that's how we're going to rebuild it anyway but the theory I'm going off is the bent mast was done in transport they strapped it down really well too well and then it transferred through this sliced into this too low and then the mast was an insurance job but this yeah dodgy repair yeah i'm gonna cut all of this off completely just on that line there i'm gonna gouge out where these cracks are or the little slots are um i'm gonna sand it all up so it's nice and clean so i can clearly see everything um make sure it's all prepared properly and get rid of all the bad stuff now the tricky thing is it's the centerboard casing so getting access from down below is pretty difficult because i can barely fit my hand up there um but i've come up with an idea where i get a party balloon blow it up stuff it in here it would just fill this little hole area up top and that should allow me to lay up my glass and have a nice finish on the inside which is what I care about because that means less cleaning up down there uh, and I can just pop the balloon or remove the balloon and it'll leave a nice round finish in this corner it doesn't have to be to tolerance or anything because the centerboard this is like a rounded edge and this is the corner so nothing really goes in this corner ever so I don't really have to worry about that too much it's just having a nice strong base now strength i'm not too concerned about because i'm literally going to be going uh solid glass over the entire thing probably like yeah solid fat chunk of it um so it's super strong and it spreads the load how i want it i'll probably tie it around i've got to be careful because i want to keep because obviously this is a set width i can't add heaps of glass on this side but that's not really the structural problem structural problems at the top here yeah i'm gonna try and cut out all of this and get started. on this um, I'll start from the top and work my way down so there's the, the ground below and here you can see these little notches either side quite clearly really and um, we tidied them right up so that's where the compression post actually crunched down to I'm assuming when they over tighten the rig or when the mast was bent in transportation, if they like strapped it down so hard, it like compressed into this. And especially if that through hole was there, it wasn't providing a load of strength. Um, so on the bottom of the compression post, I'm getting a piece of stainless welded in now. That's why it's not here. Uh, and once that plate's on, it'll spread the load across this whole top bit. So you can see how it's gone slightly yellow here, almost turning back to white also around these edges. That is basically because it's almost at the gel coat um, as well as there because I've tapered it up the back here, tapered it around the edge here, tapered my best around this side. I've left all of some of the old stuff on here just because I'm not too worried about that extra glass and stuff won't hurt. Um, this side's pretty much down to original. So is this side. Um, got rid of all of that silicon stuff they've used. And down here at the bottom I've actually because uh, when you when this boat's made they have the whole mold and then they insert the interior mold which is like basically everything down to the cookers and stuff and then they drop the deck mold on top of it so it's like sandwiches it basically and then when you imagine it this piece here this whole deck here has to slide over this because this is integral to the uh, actual hull you can see down there it actually connects in and they've made a connection now you can see the connection following all the way around I've removed all of the uh, rubbish so and you can also see 
the core material. It's honeycomb core, apart from the roof, which you can see is balsa core. Nice rotten balsa core around the windows. But this is honeycomb, so nice lightweight. Um, you can see I've ground it back to a taper. Uh, this side was a little lower, but I've tapered it all the way around. So the plan is, I was tempted to do polyester, although I think this possibly is vinyl ester. Um, but I think I'm going to go epoxy just because the water resistance, the strength, um, and also I want to try and use it because I've never used it before. I'm going to do this in a few stages, I think. Um, down here, I'm going to use some thickened epoxy, probably strengthen it with some glass bubbles and maybe some strands of chop or something. So I'm going to get that in there, fill this all up, make it nice and solid, glob it right up so I get a nice surface to actually glass my layers to uh, all the way around. Like, properly like tab tab this mold into this one right before i get started with the epoxy on board fernhurst books kindly sent me over a bunch of goodies um ranging from their cruising companions for like the places i like to sail uh, also these helpful guides on like short-handed sailing seamanship and all that which would be handy especially the multi-hull seamanship because well that's what i've got now and it's the first time for me apart from a little spin on the astus um, and also these are my favorite ones over here these are the companions I mean, they're like quick reference books that are good to have on board like nice and small light easily readable and they go over all the good stuff so like when you have a new crew on board you just throw this at them and they learn straight away vhf good to keep you in check when you're on the radio some electronic stuff if you come into trouble planning for weather splicing navigation but the one for today is grp repair which is what we're doing this is handy it goes over all the basics first things first preparation is key and i think we've got that one nailed down but basically goes over absolutely everything and they also have lovely pictures inside illustrating every bit of the process which is great and look at these lovely little diagrams too and i'm especially going to need all the gel coat help because the gel coat on this boat has seen better days let's just take a quick look at the back loads of little spider cracks loads of gel coat repairs little chips to fix some uh, old holes that need filling so it's great having all of these little books definitely recommend picking up some of these for your boat as they will come in handy when you are out on the water enjoying the sun and blue skies all right so after a few popped balloons this one's worked out quite well you can see i've double doubled it up so it's a bit tougher um so that's in there not going anywhere uh got a slight gap that should work fine because i want it to kind of go underneath the edges um so i've kind of positioned it perfectly this corner might fit in a little bit but i'm not too fussed about that what i'll end up doing is foxing over this then on top i'm going to put a bit of a i don't know i've got a bit of acrylic or something something flat smooth and uh, hard i'll place it on top and then squash it down and then once that's cured i'll be able to then laminate all of this thoroughly so i think what i'm going to do is touch a thicken epoxy and um, a few layers, maybe two layers of fiberglass just to get that initial layer started because um, I can get that done while I'm also glassing down there in one hit so I think it's time to go prep the epoxy now a bit of a acrylic or whatever smooth side down jack had to push it this way a bit because it's a bit of an angle so that's being held down i just popped underneath the boat make sure the piece of wood is pushing up so hopefully we get a pretty nice seal you can see nicely wetted out i'll probably end up doing a bit of sanding anyway even though it's hard to sand epoxy but just to make it a bit smoother and to key it for the next round it's another day and uh, this epoxy stuff has cured up quite nicely i've just cleaned it up a bit um, we've got 
some of this stuff. This is a combination mat. So you can see it's got one weave going that way and it's got stitches on it. And that stitches onto this chop strand mat at the back. So that's what they call it, the combination. And this is also good for epoxy, because normally with chop strand you can't because it's got a binder in it, so you can't use it with epoxy. But because this is stitched onto, um, actually onto this weave here, it doesn't actually need a binder to hold it together, because it's just stitched together. So this is what I'm gonna be using for laying up this. Now, this top side needs a lot of layers, because it hasn't really got much thickness, and uh, I need to build it up to this level. I uh, might do it with all fiberglass, but for now I'm just going to build up a, a nice thick layer here. Um, try and tie it in at the edge. I don't want to add any thickness to the sides really. Uh, I think I'm just going to do one of these kind of layers and hopefully it doesn't add too much. Um, all I can do is add it and then if it's too much I'll have to sand it down. Right, I've done some cutting out and you can see I've got this stack. There's one layer, two layer three layer and four layer. Now, the reason why I've done them back to back, as you can see, so chop on this side, chop on that side, and then strand to strand, is because of the directions they're facing. So, I wanna have them diagonally against each other. So if I do them back to back, that should be work quite well. The lower one is slightly wider than the rest of them, just to kind of make that connection. And then the smaller ones are making the height up. And then, I've also got this one here, or this little dimple. This will slide over the top. Let's see if I can do it one-handed. All right, then that one will just go over just like that. The edge comes down and ties in over here, which is nice. Uh, it's gonna wrap around there. You can kind of stretch this stuff a little bit and um, just to go around small things like that. Um, and then on this side, it's just gonna tie back into that joint down there, which should work quite well. And then finally, I have this one here, and that's effectively just gonna run up and over and then back down and tie into that corner there. Um, and then I've got these little odds and ends, which I might throw over the feet here. So once that's all done, it's gonna be super, super strong. And then when I get the compression post back, I can fit it up Double check that it'll fit on, uh, the width ways for the legs, and then I can work out where it needs to be positioned, so I can work out if I need to add any more layers on here, or whether I can add like a plywood kind of thing, marine ply. This was the old one, they kind of laid out like that, but you can see it got rotten, because there was that hole, where that through hole was, which is just stupid, um, but we could do that. But we'll see how this goes. I've also got to cut up some of this peel ply, which you put over, say epoxy or your polyester, and it leaves a nice tight finish. Right, I'm gonna go to the shed, mix up some epoxy and get started. This is fully cured up now. I think it's time to rip off the peel ply, so. Oh, it's so satisfying. Look at this. I'm going to the phone video, the battery died on the camera. At the crucial moment. feels very solid there's probably like well you saw how many layers I put on of that this thick stuff here yeah this ain't going nowhere especially if I decide to put more layers or whether I decide to go wood right now that the base is all cured up what I've done is a tiny bit of sanding to get the compression post fitted in as you can see fits in quite nicely quite snug and that's because I have this bit of wood underneath here underneath the base of it wedged and at the bottom of that compression post 
I've added a welded plate. I had a welder do it. Um, added little drain holes in the corner. So it's quite smart. And that will spread the load rather than acting like a knife so it doesn't cut through the uh, fiberglass again. But that compression post is fully resting. No other supports needed. And it's resting on that little centerboard casing. And I've added the table in. And the reason for that is it's the only fixed thing, I guess, because this is all stock standard. The bolt holes there that go into the compression post, stock and standard. And, uh, well, the table, I would have thought, would be level to this surface here and this surface up here. But if you remember before on the crossing over, we couldn't actually open the table because it would rub. You can see where it, it like wore down on the... Uh, the thing because it is that much compressed but right, if we go onto the phone you got the uh, the level app now if I go to here perfectly level for some reason I don't think I can park above that level over here it's two degrees two degrees and that's pointing down uh, we can try and go from the top of here probably won't be too accurate maybe the bits of wood there so about two degrees, and then when we go up to the table up here, two degrees. So, I'm pretty sure if I just have that bit of wood in there, well, a different bit of wood, a nicer, not like test piece of wood that we used when making the supports for the boat, uh, make it properly, we can then do a similar kind of thing to what was going on there. But then I can glass in this side, this would all be epoxy coated so it won't rot or anything or want to compress too much. Um, and then you can, I would need to do the wraps around. So there's just glass wrapping around the uh, these flange bits. And then I need to make the little shelves down the bottom. Uh, so I'll do all of that in one go. But I'm gonna get started cutting little bits of wood and getting some epoxy ready and just peppering everything. So then I can just come in and glass. Now the final layout went really well. I managed to add the step below the side plates and then secured the whole thing with a wrap all the way around like it should be done from standard. Um, owners forums are a great source of knowledge when trying to understand your boat fully, so I'd recommend finding yours if you have a job like this because I managed to find quite a lot of information on this Telstar. Now with this all finished up I can finally be confident about putting the mast up, which you will see in the next episode. You won't want to miss that one as the mast raising system on this boat is pure genius. So I look forward to seeing you then and thanks for watching.